government uh, ways of ensuring that society is well taken care of. So one of the ways in which government takes care of the society is through imposition of taxes, which is taxation. So what is a tax? A tax is a government levy on income or expenditure. So government will impose certain amount of money or certain percentage you pay because you have received certain amount of money because you are working, because you have received certain amount of money, which is an income, or because you are using your money to buy certain goods or service. So that is all about expenditure. So when you have to pay certain percentage of what you earn to government, or certain percentage of what you are paying for a service to government, we call it a tax. So it's a levy that we have to pay. That's why I said a levy imposed by government. We have to pay it. Either we are buying goods or we are rendering the service. So when we are rendering the service, that means we are at the, uh, we are at the receiving end. We are the producer. So for whatever we produce as a business, we pay taxes on them. For whatever we receive as a business or for whatever we receive as an individual, we also pay what? Tax. So that's why I said the tax is a government levy on income. What you receive, what you receive for expenditure, what you are spending on. Do we get that? Do we get it? Yes. So why do government impose tax? These are reasons for taxes. Look at the first one. It says taxes on salaries and profits. Where is government revenue and can be used to distribute income and wealth? So these taxes that government do, we do pay to government. They use it to redistribute income and wealth. They ensure that they are put back into the society. For example, those that don't have a job, they get what we call unemployment benefits. So all these unemployment benefits they get, how do they get come about it? They come about it because government has imposed taxes on those that have jobs, on those that are employed. So because they are employed, they have a job, government can take certain amount of of money from them and they can put back into the society for those who don't have a job. So that's what they say. That is on salaries and profit. We have government revenue and can be used to redistribute income and wealth. So those that have a job have to pay taxes. So when they pay these taxes to government, government do not just spend it, they spend it on those that don't have. So that's what we call the distribution of income. So from where we have it surplus to where we don't even have it at all. So government use taxes to finance or to finance the society. Do we understand the first reason why government will impose tax? Yes. The second one, taxes on goods and services raise the cost of production and therefore can limit the output of certain generic products such as alcohol and tobacco. So what are we trying to say here? Also, government could use taxation to stop or to put a stop towards those that take demerit goods. What are demerit goods or products? These are products that we call harmful to our health. They destroy our health. Example, alcohol, tobacco. These things are not good. But government cannot stop it. So the only way they could reduce it is to impose taxes. Do we understand? So when government impose taxes on these things, it makes the price to expect to become higher. And because the price is higher, we might choose not to buy them. Because they are not even important to our health. They are not even important to our well-being. Do we understand here? Do we understand this? So that's what he said. Government, taxes on goods and services raise the cost of production and therefore can limit the output of certain demerit products such as alcohol and tobacco. These products are not good for our health. It shortens the life of individuals that take them. So because of this reason, government can't stop it because they are sources of revenue for government. Companies that produce this pay taxes too. So because they pay taxes, Government can't stop them. But the only way government could do is, the only thing government could do is to increase the taxes so that it will discourage us that consume it. Do we understand? Yes. Okay. The third reason is tariffs. What is a tariff? A tariff is a tax you pay because you are importing goods from abroad. So taxes on, imp taxes on imports is what we call tariff. So why do government increase its tariffs or why do government impose its tariff? Government does this, does this to what? To protect industries, local industries. Do you understand what I'm saying here? They said tariffs imposed on foreign goods and services help to protect domestic firms from overseas rival. What are, the, what are domestic firms? These are firms in our local, in our country. So government could stop or increase taxation from 
bringing products from abroad because they want us to buy or consume the products here. So government will increase taxation on importation so that you can be discouraged to buy. Because when the taxation on the imports increases, what happens to the product? The price of the product increases too. So when the price of the products of import, imported products increases, we buy our local products. Do we get the point here? When taxes are imposed on the importation of goods, it might increase the price of these imported products. And when the price of imported products are expensive or high, than those that are produced here, we stop buying the imported products, rather we buy the products in here. Do we understand the point here? So government will use this to encourage local firms so that they can start producing, so that they can make more revenue, so that they can also make profit and expand their business. Instead of us, every now and then, we pay for importing. Do we get it? Yeah. Now, what is the tax burden? For every society, for every individual, there's always a tax burden. And what is a tax burden? The amount of tax we have to pay. Because we are bound to pay tax. Because it's a levy imposed by government. We, don't, we can't dodge it. We have to pay it. So it becomes what a burden to us. So that's what we call tax burden. So what is tax burden? This is the amount of tax households like me, like you, and friends like the company, this school, and the rest, they have to pay. So the rate at which we have to pay, the tax we have to pay, the amount we have to pay to government in terms of tax is what we call tax burden. Do you understand tax burden here? So what are the types of tax we have? We have direct taxes. What is a direct tax? So what are direct taxes? The, the direct tax is a type of tax paid from the income, wealth, or profit of individuals and firms. Example, tax on salaries, profits. So a direct tax is a tax I pay because I am receiving a salary. A direct tax is a tax this school pays because the school is making profits. It's a direct tax. Do you understand direct tax here? So you pay it directly to the government. So it's been taken away, it's been deducted from your income. It's been deducted from the profit you make as a business or a profit you make as a firm. So that's why we call it a direct tax. It does not involve third party. It involves me and the government. It involves the business and the government. So I'm going to pay this because I am earning salary. So my taxes charged on my income is a direct tax. Ch taxes charged on the company's profit is a direct tax. Do we understand direct tax here? Yes. So example of direct tax is income tax. Tax is uh, taxes I pay because I'm earning a salary. Corporate tax, taxes on profit. Do we get it? Do we understand? Yes. So we have indirect taxes. What is an indirect tax? This is a type of tax imposed on expenditure of goods and services. So the tax we pay because we are buying a good or we are buying a service is an indirect tax. We are not producing, we are buying. And for the fact that we are buying, we are paying a tax to government because we are purchasing. So this type of tax is what we call indirect tax. We are, we are paying the tax because we have bought a product or because we have been rendered a service. Do we understand the direct tax here? Yes. Direct tax, tax is charged on you because you are producing. Tax is charged on you because you have received an income. Indirect tax, tax is on expenditure. Tax is on why, or tax is we pay because we purchase a good or we, we purchase a service. Do we understand the direct tax? Yes. Then we have progressive tax. Progressive. What is progressive tax? It's a kind of tax which is charged based on higher income, higher income public level of individuals of firms. So this type of tax, as, we, as our income increases, our taxes or our level of tax increases. That's what we call a progressive tax. The, the tax you pay increases as your level of income increases. So look at the graph we have here. Look at the graph. We have the level of income and we have the tax rate in percentage. Here at T1, you pay Y1. So when, the, when your level of income increases to Y2, your tax rate increases to what? T2. Do we get it? So this is what we call a progressive tax. As your level of income increases, your, your tax rate increases. So look at what I said. As income level rises from Y1 to Y2, the tax rate rises from T1 to T2. So this is what we call a progressive tax. So in the example, I ask you to draw a graph to explain a progressive tax. So this is what we need to draw. We need to draw the income level and the tax rate. So we have the Y1 going to Y2, 
and T1 going to T2. Is it clear? Then we have the fifth one or the fourth one, regressive transition. What's a regressive transition? Under this type of system, those with higher ability to pay are usually are usually charged a lower rate of tax. So it is regressive because I have the ability to pay higher tax, but I'm paying a lower tax. And you, have the, you don't have the ability to pay a higher tax, but you are paying a higher tax based on your income. So it, how does it work? It is regressive because you and I may pay the same level of tax. We might pay the same tax. Irrespective of our income, we are paying the same amount of tax. Maybe I have to pay airport fee or airport tax because I am traveling abroad and I'm going to go in economy, economy class. And you are paying the same tax and you are going in maybe corporate, uh, corporate stand, not economy. Do you understand? So you are going, maybe you are going to fly a uh, private, maybe you are going to fly even a private jet and we have to pay the same amount. Maybe you are so wealthy that I do and we are going to pay the same amount of tax. So we are going to pay the same amount. Why is it regressive? It is regressive because it is just little of your own money, but it is more of my own money. Do you understand here? Maybe I earn 5,000 in dollars and you earn 30,000 in dollars and we're going to pay the same tax on airport. We're going to pay the same tax on security. So it's going to take a huge part of my own salary, or my own income, than your own income. That's why we call it regressive because it is not proportional. So we are going to pay the same tax, fine, but the amount, the rate at which you are paying, the amount that it's going to take from you is not the same as it's going to take from me. That's why it's regressive. Do you understand regressive here? Yes, so that's what I said what? With a specific amount of tax pay, with a specific amount of tax pay, I had income earners at Y2 will pay T2 and smaller proportion of tax, okay, yeah. Now lower income earner in Y1, they will pay T1. So your level of income here is low and you are paying a tax. And you, that your level of income is high, you are still going to pay the same tax rate. Do we understand? So the proportion at which it's going to take away from you. It's not the same as the proportion it's going to take from me. I earn less, you earn more. So because I earn less, you earn more, and we are paying the same level of tax, it becomes regressive. Do we understand regressive tax here? Then the fifth one, proportional taxation. What is proportional taxation? Under this tax system, the percentage of tax pay stays the same, irrespective of taxpayers' level of income. So the tax you pay here, irrespective of your income stays the same. If your taxes increase, it stays the same. So example is what called VAT, value added tax, VAT. Value added tax. Here, they take it in some countries. So whatever you produce in a country, you pay taxes on the percentage. So maybe you have to pay 20%. So you're going to pay 20% on your income. Do you understand yet? So you are going to pay 20% on whatever you earn. It is not the same as regressive. In the regressive, we pay the same, irrespective of what we earn. Just like the difference between regressive and proportional. But in proportional, you pay as you earn. Do you get it? So you pay as you earn. So you're going to pay 20% because you earn this at Y1. You're going to pay 20% if you earn at Y2. So if you earn 20,000, you pay 20% of 20,000. If you earn 50,000, uh, 50, you pay 20% of 50,000. That is proportional. Do you understand proportional tax here? For progressive, you pay, the tax you pay is based on the level of your income. As your income increases, the tax you pay increases. That is progressive tax. Regressive tax. You have the tendency to pay more, but you pay less. Do you get the point here? You have the tendency to pay more, but you pay less. Therefore, proportional. You pay as you earn. That means if you are if you are at Y1, you are ending at Y1, you pay 20% of Y1. If you are ending at Y2, you pay at you pay 20% of Y2. Do we understand? Then we have what we call the impact of taxation. So why do you don't make what? impact of taxation 
brings to the society. So look at the first one, impact of prices and quantity. So the inflation of sale tax will shift the supply of, of the products to the left. When taxes are imposed on sales, that means our cost of production will increase. And when the cost of production increases, listen, when the cost of production increases here, the price of the product will increase. And when the price of the product increases, the, co uh, the, the quantity demanded of that product will fall. And when the quantity demanded of that product falls, the, the supply curve will shift left to one. Because friends will not, want, will not want to produce more because they are not selling. Do you understand the impact now? So with taxation, increase in taxation will what? Will increase the cost of production. And when the cost of production increases, the supply curve will shift left one. Do we get it? Why is supply curve shifting left one? Supply curve will shift left one because even on the demand side, nobody wants to buy when the price is high. Remember the law of demand. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So when taxes are increasing, when government increases taxes, the price of the cost of production increases. And when the cost of production increases, the price of products increases. And as the price of production, as the price of product increases, the consumption level falls. So because the consumption level has fallen, firms will not want to produce more. They will be demotivated to produce more. So that is why the supply curve will shift left one. Do we understand? Another impact is on the economy. Impact on economic growth. It tends to reduce the incentive to work or to produce. When taxes increases, we don't want to work because we know that when we work, we're going to pay more of taxes. We don't want to produce because when we produce, we pay taxes. So it reduces our incentive to want to work. It reduces our incentive to want to produce. It demotivates us to work or it demotivates us to produce. But when, in contrast, when the taxes, when taxes falls, it increases our motivation to produce. It increases our motivation to work. Because we're going to pay less tax. Do we understand here? Are we understand, do we understand the point here? When there's taxation, it has an impact, either positive or negative, in the economy. It has an impact, either positive or negative, in the economy. It affects the economy, either positively or negatively. Do we get a point here? The third one, impact of inflation. It tends to reduce the spending ability and profit. So when there's inflation in the society, what is inflation? A persistent rise in the prices of goods and services. So when there's inflation in the society, the only way to solve it, one of the ways to solve it, is to increase taxation. Do you get what we're saying here? We're talking about how to solve a problem in the society. A problem in the society is, one of the problems in the society is inflation. Remember we said, one of the government's aim is to reduce inflation. You remember that? One of the government's aim is to reduce inflation. Do we remember? So how do we reduce inflation? Government can reduce inflation through increasing of taxation. So when taxes increases, it reduces the spending power of individuals because we have to spend less because the taxes have increased. So because we have to spend less due to tax increase, we buy less. And when we are buying less, firms won't sell. So businesses will not sell more. So as businesses don't sell, what do they do? They tend to fall the price. They reduce their prices so that they can sell. Do we get the point here? When there is an inflation in the society, one of the ways to solve inflation is to increase taxation. When you increase taxation, prices of goods, when you increase taxation, income level will fall, spending will fall. And when spending falls, firms will not sell. Revenue will fall for firms. And when revenue falls for firms, they will do what? They will reduce the prices of those products that they have increased. So, as price, so because of taxation, prices will fall because nobody is willing to buy. So this will solve the problem of inflation because we said inflation is what? A persistent rise in the prices of goods. So when these prices of goods are increasing, one of the ways the government can solve it is to increase taxation. So when taxation increases, people's spending power will fall. And when people's spending power falls, they don't buy. And because they don't buy, Firms will reduce their prices. Do we understand? So we need to know that when there is inflation in the society, we can solve the problem of inflation through increasing taxation. Is it clear? Another 
impact is on location. What impact does taxation bring to location? The rate of corporate tax and income tax will affect where multinational businesses choose to locate. What we're saying in Brazil is here. It might, taxation might not affect the local firms, but you as a multinational business, you want to produce, you want to establish, you want to choose a location where the tax rate is less so that you can make more profits. So for multinational businesses, they don't just set up in other countries, they set up in countries that, are, that have less taxation. So you as a country, government in the country can increase, uh, can increase, what we call it, can increase um, production level, can increase um, investment level if their taxes is low. So firms, multinational businesses will be encouraged to set up in that country. Multinational companies will, set, will be encouraged to come to that country to produce because their taxes in that country is low. Remember that you have to pay taxes on your profits. Mm. So if you have to pay taxes on your profit, what happens to your profit? The profit level falls. Do we get it? Yeah. So what do you do as a business? You think about a place or a country that tax, that tax rate is less so that your profit level can what? Increase. Do we understand the impact here? Yeah. And the last one, impact on social behavior. That is can be used to alter social behavior with the intention of reducing the consumption of demerit goods. So we said, I said earlier that direct, indirect taxes are taxes we pay on, on expenditures. So if in a country government wants to reduce the way people take alcohol or the way they take tobacco or cigarettes, if government wants to reduce the consumption, they can what? Impose taxation. So when they impose taxation, that means the price of these products will increase. And when the price of this product increases, the demand for those products will fall. It might not, it might not come down finally, but it will reduce radically. Do we understand? So these are all called impact of taxation. What will taxation? What are the effects of taxation in the society? So in the example, my ask, what are the effects of taxation? We are still talking about what the impacts of taxation. So when there is increase in taxation in the society, what happens to the production of goods and services? When there is a reduction in the taxation rate of a country, what happens to the production of goods and services? So taxes can increase and reduce. Do we understand? So we have to take note that when the tax of production, when the tax uh, imposed by government reduces, it tends to increase the production of goods and services. It motivates us to produce goods and services. It motivates us to produce. It motivates us to work. But when the taxes are increasing, it falls the supply of goods and services. It demotivates us to produce. It demotivates us to work. Do you understand this topic? Do you understand taxation here? So taxation in the nutshell means that we are paying a certain amount of money to the government. And government takes this taxation as well, their own revenue. As we businesses have our own revenue, when we sell goods and services, government also have a revenue, and it is true what? Taxation. 